In this video, we're going to set it up when we click our host game button and our grid with this menu here. We will want to, by default, set a map to essentially just kind of like we did with our solo here where we just set the first index. We're going to be doing the same kind of thing here where we set the map image to just the default map essentially. And we want to as well uh, populate the list box here and set a default one pretty much. So what we're going to have to do is kind of the same deal with our solo map button. So if we look over here, we have our constructor, which takes in the parent, which is the main menu widget, and info being the map info that we're setting up to it. So that's how we populate what well, we set up uh, our scroll box. So we're going to be spawning a bunch of these widgets. Granted, we're going to be making a duplicate of this because we don't need an on hybrid event. And going from there, so that's how we're going to select the temporary map. And then when we press OK, we're going to confirm those settings. And it's going to be the official selected map of that server until we're ready to start, um, unless the host decides to change the map. So let's get started. We're going to duplicate this, so Control W. Let's change this to W underscore um, host map button. It's a pretty bad name, but you know, might work. We're going to get rid of this on hovered and delete this info here. We're going to move the on clicked event up and have it execute that information. Voila super complicated and we're going to be changing this function out to a new one that we create so one thing i forgot to do because i did it uh so pretty much i had about 209 minutes of recordings that i had to toss out the window and in one of those i changed this from set hovered map info to set solo hovered map info so make sure to just change that this so we have one for solo and one for our online host so let's go ahead and add a new function. Can we duplicate it? Yes, we can. Let's duplicate it. Let's call it set host clicked map info or host settings map info. That makes a little more sense. So let's go to our parent set host settings map info link it up and so we have our text box for solo map name we want so that is one thing i think i forgot does it have the map name Uh, no, it does not. So we'll, that's one thing we don't have to worry about. So no need to set text. Uh, there's no description. Just the image. So we're change isolo map image to the heck was it called? I host settings map image. That's convenient. Right, set that as target and link it up okay so we have that let's go ahead and we click host game we will want to populate it so we're going to perform the same thing here so we have our map list we're going to do a for each loop and for each element we're going to do create widget. Class is going to be host map button. The info is going to be the array element. And the parent, is there anything that goes in the parent? Eh, well, just a reference to self. Then once it's created, we're going to add it 
to the scroll box, scroll host settings map list. I'm 90% sure that's it. Or do you add child? Contents can be the return value of the widget. And it should fill it. So host game, map one, map two. And look at that, it sets it all for us. So that leaves us with the uh, same problem actually. So host game, map one, map two. Host game, map one, map two, map one, map two. So we have to have another control variable. So in our info, let's uh, go ahead and just duplicate. Let's call it host map selected. And we're gonna do the same thing here. So let's move this over, get host map selected, perform a branch. And if it's false, loopity loop through the stuff. And then we want to set it to true. So let's make sure this prevents it, which it does. Now we want to set the um, first index. So from here, we're going to get map index again, or map list, sorry, is valid index for index zero, perform a branch. And if it is valid, we want to get a reference to the first index and call set host settings map info to that first index. So now it should automatically be selected like it is there. So map one by default is selected. And here we can set our map, like our, what you call it? I can't remember what current host map was. I can't remember if I created this or not after or in one of those tutorials that I deleted or if I did this previously. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure, but so either way, we're going to create a new variable and call it host current map. The variable type is going to be map info. And then what we're going to do. So we're going to take host current map. We're going to set it. Or I'm going to do this on the inside of this. To clean it up some. What in the world? There we go. So host current map is going to be the first index. So now that that is valid. So for example, when we click uh, Let's say we just go to host game and click start. We already had, we're going to be loading from host current map. So that's where we're going to grab the information from. So then when we, what we want to do as well, let's see, it's in the, this one here. So we have I host map image. We will want to set that image to the first one as well. So we may as well go ahead and do that. So we're going to grab off a of host current map. We're going to break it. We're going to grab the I host map image, which is this one right here. Yeah, that one. We're going to do set brush from texture and it's going to be the map, map image and we're just going to simply match the size yeah just make sure that was set so when we click cooperative host game this by default is set so now we have it's not functional when we actually set it like by pressing ok but you know um, that'll be in the next video I think so now when we click on host game, game settings, we fill the map list with our maps. They all correspond correctly. They hold the same info 
I mean, I'm trying to make this as kind of just modular to where it's easy for us to do that. And same thing, our map image for the lobby is set so that's easily seen, or so that's there by default. All right, so now we have all of that. I'd say we're good to go and at a good stopping point. So we have our map info being populated for the game setting, so we can select it. We have our lobby map being set by default to the first index. Yeah, I think that's all we're going to do in this one. All right, now that that's out of the way, I'll see you in the next one. And we'll go ahead and make it functional when we go and change the map and press OK. So that way it updates this, uh, this little map image there. So I'll see you then.